Welcome, David Wiss here, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition and Recovery. Today we're going to talk about bariatric surgery. As a practicing dietitian, I've heard several tales of things getting different after bariatric surgery. Obviously life changes, but the question of interest today is what about changes in taste? How is it possible that people could be liking or disliking different foods after surgery? So we're going to talk about two main procedures. The one on the left we will discuss is a ruin Y gastric bypass. The second one is a band we won't talk about. The third one is a sleeve gastrectomy. And the one to the far right is a more complicated procedure that we won't be talking about. Regardless of the procedure, it's typically associated with an increased sense of fullness after eating. So the individual can eat much less volume. They feel much less hunger. They uh, tend to eat uh, less energy dense foods and eat more often and it's a really complicated network with the gut and the brain and the hormones and the bacteria that we're going to touch on a little bit today. We're going to focus mainly on the ruin Y which is an actual bypass meaning part of the stomach is bypassed completely and the, the sleeve procedure where it's not a bypass but uh, about 80% of the stomach is uh, sleeved off. So there's evidence to show that changes in taste perception do follow bariatric procedures, and some people think it may be contributing to the long-term maintenance of weight loss after surgery. Other investigators have asked the question, like, well, what domains of taste are different? And in looking at sweetness, saltiness, bitterness, and sourness, uh, this study showed that sourness was the statistically significant change between both Ruin Y and Sleeve. Um, in, in one study, it was shown that the taste changes that were associated with higher percentage weight loss was linked to the Ruin Y, but not the sleeve. So there's questions about, are there differences between those procedures that might be affecting taste? Maybe it has to do with gut bacteria. Uh, another subject showed that both the Ruin Y and the sleeve had the same beneficial effects uh, regarding taste perception. But again, keep in mind these are small studies. This one only had 31 subjects. It's hard to get a large sample size when you're dealing with these kind of surgeries. Uh, this study looked at precisely which foods were different. You can see here um, black is the post-surgery. So you see a, a significant increase in um, preference for vegetables and fruits and uh, some of the stuff that might, one might consider more healthful and definitely a decrease in some of the more highly palatable or refined foods. So it, it begs the question, is this just a kind of psychosocial construct, a, a result of surgery and optimism about a different life, or can there actually be changes physiologically, biologically, that impact taste preference? Um, in this study, it was a small sample size again, it was shown that uh, in the first year post Ruin Y, there was swift and persistent changes in the gut microbiota. And this is where I'm really interested. What if, and again, we don't have the answers, what if the removal or the changes of certain types of bacteria that live in the intestine actually changed the way the host, the human, perceived taste? Uh, in this uh, review article, it was suggested that post-operative gut microbiota was similar to that of lean and less obese subjects. So there's definitely something that's happening at the microbiome level as a result of the surgeries, and this may be one of the reasons why they are working the way they are. It all points to the future, which is precision nutrition, being able to integrate information we have, not just about calories and vitamins and minerals, that's old, but also what we know about hormones, what we know about gut bacteria, and then uh, m m more recently what we're learning about epigenetics. So bringing all this information together to be able to point towards nutrition is certainly the future. Couple key final points. We know that bariatric surgery affects alcohol consumption. Usually before the surgery, uh, people choose more highly stimulating food over alcohol. Um, can affect the reward pathways in the brain, specifically in the striatum. And then after, alcohol consumption goes up. Uh, some people call it cross addiction. It might also be, be because the ethanol is, is absorbed much quicker and it hits the brain faster. Either way, it's something that has shown up in the literature. It's also important to acknowledge that there's a lot of 
loss of control eating after surgery. So there's definitely reports of weight regain, food addiction, eating disorder, psychopathology, and those are things that need to be uh, considered, screened, and treated. There's evidence of psychological characteristics uh, being associated with certain uh, positive or negative outcomes, specifically things like impulse, um, ineffectiveness, interoceptive awareness, interpersonal distrust. These are things that have been studied that are linked to bariatric surgery outcomes, and it all adds to a biopsychosocial understanding of this issue. Um, there's also evidence of changes in cognitive function. I've, I've heard about positive changes in cognitive function as well as negative. What we know about the link between gut bacteria and the brain makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you change the gastrointestinal microbiome, you're likely to change cognitive function. Uh, this study showed that the history of binge eating disorder did make a difference in terms of the uh, outcomes, which was the neurocognitive test performance. So we need more research. We definitely don't have all the answers here. It's also important to remember that binge eating disorder is um, usually stemming from deep underlying psychological issues, uh, history of eating disorder. In this case, there was a bariatric surgery and the 26-year-old woman started uh, self-harming. And so it's just important to know that looking at these issues solely from the weight perspective can be doing a major disservice. We're talking about uh, a psychological, social, spiritual issue. We need to integrate perspectives on all of them. And finally, I found this interesting. It, it turns out that uh, bariatric surgery is also linked to changes in relationship status. So um, increased incidence of divorce and separation and increased incidence of marriage and new relationships. So lots of life changes happening with people. Um, some of which um, can be criticized and some of which has to be acknowledged and recognized as uh, progress in the medical community. If you have questions or comments about this, I, I would certainly love to hear from you.